Okay, guys, so um, big news just happened this morning. Uh, we got an exclusive drop on some news that Reebok is going to be offering up to a $1 million prize purse um, for athletes who wear a Reebok shoe while competing and winning an individual event at the CrossFit Games. So that basically that means if you're wearing a Reebok shoe, you win an event, you can get up to $10,000 depending on which division you're in. Um, I think some of the most immediate implications of this are that um, an athlete who wins one event coupled with what CrossFit gives, which is $3,000, is $13,000 to an individual event for winning an individual competition, just one event win. And that equals what 15th place overall for the overall end of weekend finishes for the CrossFit games. Uh, guys, like we've never seen this before. This is definitely something that's very new and very different. Um, how do you see this playing out? What do you think some of the key implications are of, of, of a new announcement like this? I, th I think for individual athletes that are, you know, that don't have contracts with other shoe companies, there's no reason they shouldn't participate in this, especially if there's, if there's an event that they think they can, do, they could win. Um, I don't think you have to wear Reebok shoes for the entire weekend. I think if you just lace them yep. up for the handstand walk, cause you're amazing at handstand walks and you're going to go for it. So I think what you'll see in terms of competition on the floor is that certain athletes who feel that they excel in one particular domain or event are going to take risks that they might not have taken otherwise. And they might be willing to sacrifice failing on that parallel racing across it, knowing that, Hey, if I hit this out of the park, this one time, I'm probably taking on more money than I would with my overall finish at the games. Well, and, and to play off of that, again, if an athlete does decide they want to go unbroken, let's say on muscle ups or on a um, handstand walk, that is going to directly translate into a better fan experience by them putting themselves out there, really selling it out for a workout. I think that's a positive win overall if that were to happen. Yeah, I also think too, right? So right now I think there's a big gap between there's a very elite tier of professional athletes, right? The people who perennially come in first, second, third, those guys who have those shoe contract sponsors. But in CrossFit, unlike a lot of professional sports, there's a huge drop off into kind of more of like the amateur side. And that does trickle into the lower end of those athletes who are qualifying for games who may not have a, a shoe sponsor or a a contractual sponsor, right? So now you're giving them the opportunity to make way more money than they would have with this kind of an opportunity. It's also extending into the master's division. And I almost kind of wish that they had announced this before people had made travel plans. Because one thing that I noticed is that a lot of Australian masters aren't competing this year. And the best thing that I can guess at that is that it costs about $20,000 to make it to the US as an athlete. And so they kind of looked at that and said, not worth the money for me. Um, now you get a master's athlete who, you know, maybe that gap between what they're spending and what they're making gets a little smaller if they can have something like this, right? Yeah, and so essentially, um, you know, the topic of, of prize purses is always a hot part of the conversation and, and prize purses definitely went up this year with the introduction of the new sponsor noble ten thousand dollars they went up for the first place prize person five thousand for second and on down one of the other issues is that crossfit doesn't pay out beyond 20th place so the idea that you can win one event and make more than the person who at the end of the weekend finishes 20th is kind of crazy and just by the way if you win two events that's twenty six thousand dollars that's that's more than 10th place at the games and 10th place at the games is pretty dang hard to do. Now, so is winning two events, but like I'm fascinated by the dynamic that there are now opportunities for athletes to not only just fund their entire trip to the games, especially for a U.S. based athlete, but actually walk away in the green and all they need to do is win two events. Is this, like, is this the the big opportunity for athletes to start professionalizing even more if more brands more sponsors start coming into this and doing this yeah i think that's one of the key key talking points is <clears throat> reebok might be the first to offer something like this but what's to say that a victory grips or a two pood belts or something you know in a different domain of apparel it doesn't come along and say hey if you were in our event they might not be able to put up the same quantity of of payout that reebok can but they might say We'll throw a thousand dollars for anyone who wears victory grips during an event and wins them, or or maybe a drink sponsor says, "Hey, if you, you know, if, if someone tosses you a fit aid after you cross the finish line in first place, and you drink it during your interview, here's five grand or something like that." Now, obviously, CrossFit's going to have 
have to decide like where, if and where they draw the line in terms of what's acceptable and permissible based on their own sponsorships. But for the time being, there is an opening in the marketplace for other companies to potentially enter in and do something similar. Yeah, I do know that some companies like I do know that Killcliff did sponsor some games teams in the past uh, back towards the early 2010s. They sponsored some so a couple of games teams. And, you know, it was kind of that policy of, you know, uh, someone throws you a kill cliff at the end, you drink it, and then you make it, if you win the event, you get extra money, or you step on the podium at the end of the weekend, you get bonus money through your sponsor contract. But what's that, what's this kind of to stop more brands from doing this? Cause they're realizing that this is, this is a major thing, right? And it's something that's so easy for the athletes to do. All they have to do is wear a shoe, right? Yeah. Assuming, assuming, and I th think it has to be clear is that, so, you know, essentially what an athlete has to do in order to claim their prize is they need to wear a Reebok shoe and they need to be contractually allowed to wear a Reebok shoe. So if you're a Nike athlete or you're a noble athlete, that's not really going to be an option for you. So it does sort of take away a prize earning potential opportunity for those athletes. But let's talk about the broader um, implications for the athletes who are competing. It They have to be wearing a shoe. So uh, like to be clear, and what we know is that there's 15 events that are going to be out there. We know one specifically is a water based event. So let's take that out there. That's 14. That's $140,000 per gender, $280,000 for the individual division alone. Oh, and by the way, they're doing this for the teams and the teams make nothing from winning an event. And I asked Rich about that this morning and he's like, that's a, you know, a great opportunity. I'm paraphrasing here, but a great opportunity to, to make more money and potentially have a significant increase in the overall prize purse. Just so that everyone's aware here, it's ten thousand. It's a hundred thousand dollars to the winning team who walks away at the top of the pony at the end of the weekend. Mayhem's in a perfect, you know, is a favorite to go on and do that again. But now, if you were to sweep and win five events, which is definitely possible for Mayhem, now you've gone one hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's a fifty percent increase in the overall prize purse, adding a significant influence in the team division that isn't quite as significant in individuals because individuals walk yeah. away with 300 and what is it, 310,000. Yeah. It's especially because, you know, you have the team division, which didn't go up in prize money this year from 2019. There's no 2020 team division, but the teams are already kind of frustrated with the money coming out of CrossFit, right? You saw teams, uh, only making $5,000 for coming in first at a semifinal. You divide that by four people at a coach and that's not even covering travel expenses, right? Now you're getting teams. This is going to start making, allowing affiliates to almost like professionalize their teams, right? Teams had to be amateur in the past because it costs so much money, you know, to get them there. You weren't really making a lot of money out of teams. The only teams that could be professional were those top tier teams like Mayhem. This, and something like this, well, okay, I don't want to bring that up, but uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> make this, right? Teams that teams that had the money, had the sponsors, had the name brand behind them. Now you could start getting affiliates, right? Who are coming in and saying like, okay, Victory Grips is coming in and saying, we're going to give this much money if your team wears this, right? Now you could send teams and actually make money. Well, to be clear, I mean, third place at the at the games and team division is forty thousand dollars. Fourth place is twenty five thousand dollars. You have fourth place in a couple of wins. You went from twenty five thousand dollars to forty five thousand dollars with a couple of wins. It's almost doubling yeah. your prize purse. I think the impact there could be significant, but I'm not. I, I'm. I want to wait to see how that plays out based off of this result and whether it changes how people attack it and attack individual workouts. Is what I want to ask you, Brian. Fan experience is something that's really important to being a sport that's appealing, not just for us as CrossFitters, but broadly speaking, beyond CrossFit to appeal to other audiences. We know that CBS Sports will be broadcasting live the finale on television, live for anybody to be able to watch on cable TV here in the United States. Does this have the potential to change um, the excitement factor of how somebody t takes on a workout, which can ultimately kind of you know, increase that fan uh, appreciation and the fan engagement and the fan interest in in these competitions. Yeah, <clears throat> when, it, when it comes to that particular question, people have um, for years now have been throwing around different potential scoring systems that reward your performance relative to the field. So if you win, you don't just get this many points. If you win by more, you're rewarded for more. And part of the, the thought behind that conversation was to you know entice athletes to give everything they have every time they take the floor instead of just playing for a position 
now when you have such influential prize money on the line for someone who's you know potentially could win more money by by winning one workout than they could over the entire duration of the weekend yes i think you're definitely going to see people going for it i mean the 550 yard run comes to mind for me like maybe you don't want to you don't want to sell out on that event because the, of what, how it could affect the rest of your weekend but it's like man if this is my event now you have to go for it and if five guys in the field all take this opportunity to wear a reebok shoe for that that also feel like they have a potential to win now we're gonna really see maximum oh, literally potential. a race to the finish yes and yeah. and yes i think that it does for sure especially in specific events like that have the potential to dramatically in, increase um you know uh yeah. what's the word i'm looking for uh drama at the yeah, end of drama. Some of those races. no it's drama that's what we're looking for we're looking for the tia toomey cara saunders moment where they're both going for it, they want it. Now that was a point for point battle, but what we've seen play out in the individual competition is it has not been a point for point battle. In fact, it's been the opposite of a point for point battle. We're on Saturday, midday, it's a foregone conclusion. No disrespect to the other athletes, but the, Toomey and Frazier have been head and shoulders above their, comp their competitors. So as a fan, I'm thinking, hey, you know what? If it, A, causes lower, uh, lower leaderboard athletes to steal points from winners because any one of these athletes can technically can win an, an event at any given time they all have an area where if it comes up it's a specialty they can come in and they can win it now there's an incentive to win it and i'm curious i want to see more of that i want to see tighter races and i think fans want to see tighter races because tighter races make for great sports moments they make yeah. for those highlight reels you're gonna see the events that are sport specific like the the parallel handstand walk the 550 yard dash, you're going to see those events become so much more exciting, right? Whereas in the past, you may have seen, you know, like some people walk away with the event almost, you're going to see a lot more athletes gunning for that position, because they know that they can potentially be, you know, a top tier, a TA player to me who might not be as sport specific in that event, right? right. Because they want that first place event win. Well, I certainly hope that's the one of the added outcomes. Obviously, supporting athletes further professionalizing the sport by adding more money into it is a good thing overall. I think this is a net win for everybody, fans, fans, spectators, athletes, coaches, anybody inside the industry. More money in it is a good thing. But, uh, but, but I want to. I, I, we're running out of time here, so I want to ask a very specific question, and I want to just gear towards the age group, which we, uh, age group divisions and adaptive divisions, which we alluded to earlier. Um, and kind of one of the startling, I think, statistics about age groups and adaptives is that most people don't understand. They probably don't even think about it, but none of the teams make any money competing here. Now, with NCAA regulations being lifted about about getting monetary compensation for competitions, endorsements, sponsors, et cetera, I think this is a great first foray into opening up opportunities for teenage athletes that won't lose their college eligibility but now they can actually make some money. Now, anything that a first place or second place athlete makes, it's 1,000 for first, 2,000 for second, is like stuff you're gonna be able to- 500 for second. Sorry, yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 500 for second. <laughs> but to, um, to a 14 year old kid, $500 is, that's a lot of money. <laughs> no, you it's know? not just a lot of money, but when we're talking about how those athletes progress from athletes who are um, sort of in the amateur phase into the professional phase, that can go a long ways, I think, to continue to support that, which a lot of them are relying on their parents individually to support that. And that could have a trickle down effect to competitions that include and invite teenage divisions. And there could be broader implications just beyond the games winning potential to other like pit uh, throwdown uh, teenage divisions in, in Wadapalooza that have traditionally not offered tries versus that could also have an effect that I think could be very positive for training up the next generation of athletes to move from amateur to pro. Yeah. It's one of it's I, one of the I think it's one of the highlighting features of this announcement by Reebok is that they've included everyone and they've created an additional earning opportunity for every division, regardless of size or age or number of people that that are in the you know on your team, and uh, across the board that's something that you know obviously the teenage was a little bit nuanced until this NCA regulation, but CrossFit notori is notorious and famous for having equal prize courses for men and women since their beginnings and and recognizing the diversity of the community even at the competitive landscape and reebok is echoing that with this announcement yeah and i think you're going to see a lot more 
there's not a lot of incentive for kids to get into CrossFit right now, right? Like there's an incentive for kids to play football. You get a football scholarship. There's no CrossFit scholarships, right? No. And so this is kind of like the foray into the quote unquote CrossFit scholarship where you're going to get kids who are more incentivized. You know, you, you go into high school, what sport do you want to pick? Do you want to do CrossFit or do you want to do football? Okay, well, I'm not going to get anything out of doing CrossFit, even though I'm really good at it. Now yeah, we might, I we might, might be able to win a some money. Change not just with the with the financial contributions, but also there's a couple of teen athletes who've qualified for um, the the individual division at the games. Emma Carey and Mal O'Brien. Mal O'Brien has a sponsorship with uh, Noble uh, and mm-hmm. uh, Emma Lawson, who's who's competing uh, in the 16, 17 division, has a sponsorship with Wit. And so now we're kind of seeing for the first time maybe the opening of some doors and again now with these restrictions being lifted there could be more opportunities for them the last shot i don't want to make is for the masters and not just the 35 to 39 and walk away with the twenty five thousand dollar prize purse you got these 50 55 60 65 divisions where it's still a thousand dollars and it's only five thousand if you win the 65 plus division you know like nine events thousand per event that's a huge opportunity i think it's great that they're recognizing that they're also not diminishing that re- that return for older athletes, you know, Reebok's been a brand that has kind of been clear on their messaging that we are fitness for all. And that includes everybody that includes adaptive athletes that includes older athletes, everyday CrossFitters and elite athletes. And I think that they're kind of backing that up with the amount of money that they're contributing to this overall. I mean, it's impressive as hell that anyone who's over the age of 65 is going to step foot on <laughs> on it on the competition floor in Madison, Wisconsin. That's insane. You know, you asked 20 years ago if you said, hey, would you ever uh, picture someone who could have grandkids to be, you know, snatching 150 pounds? No, everyone would have thought you were crazy, right? And so, the, and obviously the masters aren't in it for the money, but I love the fact that Reebok is there and they're saying, this is insanely impressive that these people are able to be fit at, you know, 60, 65. So one of the masters is 69 years old. That's insane, you know? And so the fact that they recognize that and it's not just a it's not just a oh we're going to recognize the you know the big athletes who are bringing in all that money for us too they're also going to recognize those masters who put in the work and they're not in it for the money but it is nice to get that recognition too Absolutely. All right, we're going to leave it at that. We're going to track um, the take homes. You know, we'll be we'll be we'll be monitoring it pretty closely to see whether or not somebody's eligible or not for the end of the competition be a very interesting point of discussion kind of once we get after the games and can say well how much money did did that Reebok end up paying out but then also what was the earning potential and how much more earnings came out depending on who won you know and it's going to be a story that we'll be able to follow over the next week and a half or so so uh okay Brian thanks so much for joining um we'll be having more news on this coming up pretty soon and we'll see you guys soon thanks guys sounds good thanks Justin